I know that doesn't count on, on anybody's record, but uh, back then was saying it felt like a, a Big Ten row game. What would it feel like to you, and, and how big a win is it, even though it doesn't technically count? You know? Well, I think a couple things. One, I mean, uh, the turnout, the crowd, um, <laughs> mid-season form the crowd was. Um, to think that our season ticket holders were not involved and we still sold the building out and, and uh, you know, the it's for a great cause. So that's awesome um, to be able to contribute to to a cause that's, that, you know, that and we sold – a lot of tickets, so that's that's awesome. I think Coach Painter's right. It was a it was a crowd that um, certainly will help Purdue. Um, it, it gave all of our new guys a taste of what it's going to be like in our building. Um, so that's a great thing. Um, I thought both teams um, treated the game. Uh, like a mid-season game that felt like an NCAA tournament vibe, to be honest. Um, I'm really, like, really, really proud of our team because we have so many new faces. We're trying to figure out go-to sets. We're trying to figure out who's going to have the ball in their hands. Um, we're playing against a team that's so well coached and is very physical and very tough and has a unique player, a star player. Um, potential national player of the year and, and I thought that in the first half they you know they executed the game plan as good as they possibly could meaning our guys um, and much like you know with Chet Holmgren um, you know I thought we did a good job of putting pressure um, on the rim although they altered shots and stuff um, of, of trying to of trying to foul people out too um, but that that Purdue team has the talent, the coaching, um, to win a national championship. They, they do. Um, and obviously, you know, I mean, we have, we had a home court advantage tonight. Um, but really, I'm, I mean, I, you know, for this, this early in the season, I mean, um, really, really happy with how they kind of fell into some roles and, and guys off the bench contributed and, and, um, defensive pressure was really good with, Forcing 20 turnovers and 14 steals against a team that plays in a conference where valuing the ball is really important. Um, the seven blocks, um, really, really impressive against a, a power five, really tall team that's got incredible length. And, and um, you know, obviously T. Mark hit a, a huge shot on our 15 fist out red on the, on the wing. Um, you know, and, 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 and T. Mark and Debo both played a little bit of point guard and had four assists and, and, and L's co contribution at that position as well. And we got to, you know, got to clean up our turnovers and, and some of our shot selection. Kevin, most of your teams that were back-to-back -back lead eight were so good at closing out games and just being better in tight games the last three, four, five possessions. Were you surprised against a team that good that your guys were just tougher and made more plays, even when that overtime started a little bit slow and some bad positions early. You stuck with some of the same guys and they got it done. Yeah, I mean, I thought that, um, you know, we work on special situations so much. You know, some teams in the summer uh, just do skill. You know, they do four-man skill, a lot of programs. And, and, and um, you know, we utilize our time where, where we actually practice and um, work on, you know, I mean, we have a thing that we took from the Dallas Cowboys called Mojo Moments, um, you know, where, where we play some, some music that goes along with that movie, and uh, we yell out a situation, and then our guys have to execute. So, but we, we, we got a lot of holes still, certainly. We, we had some empty possessions that we want to try to get better. Speaking of the past, you've had one, two, sometimes three guys that maybe could close. You brought a guy in late after Demo got hurt that helped you close in overtime at Ellis. Do you feel like you have maybe a spool of riches and guys that can go get it done, even in clutch situations, maybe because they're veterans and have been around? What well, you know, I think, Kevin, that, um, f you know, like when the play breaks down or when you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, like can you beat your man to draw extra defenders? And, um, you know, Devo uh, has that ability. T. Mark has that ability. L. Ellis has that ability. Um, 
I thought Leighton Blocker played his minutes great tonight. Um, you know, Battle is a guy that we we ran our one up play and isolated him, and you know he took a three and hit the hit the back of the rim, but it was straight on and and was a good look for him. Again, we're much evolving, but um, you know I didn't know what to you know quite frankly I didn't know what to expect coming into the game. So um, you know we get back to it on Monday and try to get better. Curtis. Coach, could you talk a little bit more about some of the things you guys were doing to, to maybe disrupt Edie or keep him out of a rhythm and then just the, the individual job of Chandler Lawson on him today? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I think I talked about it. You know, we, we used basically the same rules that we did with Shaquille O'Neal um, where we tried to pressure the ball. I thought that, you know, the high-low pass, we got a lot of deflections. Um, Brazil had at least three. Um, and so we tried to smother the ball. Uh, and then the other three guys that did not guard Edie, we tried to play a yo-yo game where you're in and out and, and you're stunt bluffing. And, and um, I, was, I was pretty surprised that, um, you know, the way that we executed it with, with, you know, only having, you know, we had a long prep obviously, but, um, but I was impressed with how, um, you know, our guys, you know, they made him work for every possession, and, and there was no clean entry passes, which was what we wanted. And I thought our weak side uh, tags were really good. We had a couple steals from the weak side on their lob pass. And he's, I mean, he's, he's the hardest player in the country to guard a, a lob pass. Um, I thought we did a good job crab walking him as well, um, the guy that was guarding him. So a lot of positive things for sure guarding a team that's got lethal shooters, good passers. Um, and, you know, five starters back. Coach? Coach, with Chandler Lawson, I mean, he was kind of a late ad for y'all. Has it surprised you at all what he's brought to, you, brought to the team, or has it been about what you expected? No, I mean, it's, it's you know, when we did the research, first of all, his coachability is off the charts. I mean, he's as coachable as any player I've ever coached. Uh, he really wants to please. He's a great talker in practice, meaning he, he echo play calls. He's talking on defense. He's in the right position. Um, and then you look at the number of games that he has from an experience standpoint of starting, and um, I thought he was phenomenal uh, defensively. I mean, the block shots, and, and uh, you know, he hit a big shot early in the game when we were kind of, you know, what, what's going to happen with us offensively. And um, he's, he's, you know, he's a great teammate, and he's, and he's, and he, like I mentioned, he's really great for the coaching staff. They all love, when he comes to their drill, they love coaching him. Um, he's got a real positive, upbeat vibe to him. I think Purdue finished plus 14 on the boards, but in the overtime period, I thought y'all came out some really tough rebounds. Just what, what did you make? How y'all were able to do that in the overtime period? I mean, yeah, I mean, it was pretty, pretty, uh, I mean, in the huddle. I mean, it was like, hey, we, we just go back in the locker room now if we're not going to rebound. You know, it's, it's, we're not going to win the game. Uh, and it might not even be close if we don't start rebounding in traffic. Because I thought we, too many balls were bouncing off our hands. And, and um, our guards, I thought, did a good job folding back and rebounding. TB went above everybody on, on a possession to grab a defensive rebound. And um, we, we got we to get better rebounding the ball. And Alcorn State's got a player that's a phenomenal offensive rebounder. So that'll be a lot of, uh, of our emphasis uh, heading into Alcorn is, is keeping one of the premier offensive rebounders off the glass. Scott, where did Caleb give you maybe his best minutes? Was it on the glass? Was it you know, defensively? Where, where, where did you see him maybe impact the game most? In well, he gets a shot off so quick, and, and uh, the opposition's got to stay attached to him. Obviously, his numbers last year – uh, dictate that people are going to have to guard him. They're going to have to stay close to him. He's an explosive scorer. He gets the ball out of his hands really, really quickly. Um, but I thought defensively and defensive rebounding, you know, really happy with what he did tonight. Double box outs. I mean, that was part of the, the game plan is if you're guarding a guy that's a non-offensive rebounder, you have got to go double box out. Um, which means pinching a good offensive rebounder. And, and, and I thought he did a great job of that. What's that? Have we asked you about Trevor yet? I don't think so. He was only as good as anybody in the building tonight. <laughs> I mean, he was awesome. I mean, he came to me uh, three times that I can remember and said, Coach, can I get 30 seconds? And it was a pretty simple answer, no.
So, but he did, after one no, he did come back and come back, you know, but uh, he's got, look, this was great for him. Uh, physically, the injury, um, you know, he's healed. Uh, he's got total medical clearance. Uh, I, I wish he would have played a couple minutes in the red and white game, but we, we wanted to, you know, get another week into his, uh, you know, rehab, so to speak. And uh, this was great for him because it was a physical game. It was a game you're getting bumped and dislodged. And, and uh, he hung in there and played great and stretched the defense out. And, you know, his shot selection from three, the four that he took, I thought were all really good shots. He didn't force anything. Um, and he opened up the floor for dribble drives. We went to that 15 fist up lift four with him lifted. And he was, he was I mean, it, they had to stay attached to him. And when you talked to us earlier this week, you talked about the challenges that Coffin, Ren, and TD playing together. It didn't happen as much as we thought it would, but what, just you were able to hold both of them early on. Just what were some of the challenges, and did it play out the way you thought it would? Yeah, I mean, those guys, you know, both those guys, if you give them an angle to score, you cannot win. And so it's a matter of kind of sandwiching them. And uh, when they catch the ball, you got to have aggressive, committed digs. And then you've got to get back to a three-point shooter. So we talked about having multiple defensive efforts. Um, you know, it can't just be, hey, I'm putting effort on a dig. And oh, by the way, I got to get back out to a three-point shooter. So I thought that our contests were really good. Um, and I thought we did a good job of, of kind of sandwiching those guys with, uh, with different help guys because we mixed it up who kind of came down there on committed digs and tried to, tried to do it with different people. At one point it was Devo. At one point it was T-Mark. Um, Battle was designated digger a couple times. So, But those guys are, I mean, this is, you know, Purdue is phenomenal. Uh, Tremont uh, earlier here said that he wants the ball in those kind of end games. So do about eight other guys. Yeah, so I was about to say, I mean, how like how do you guys kind of work on who gets the ball in those end of situations? And, you know, I mean, what has kind of separated him maybe in this game, at least game one, he was able to kind of come through and do that for you? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, I've, you know, like with his size, um, he's got uh, the ability to rise over a defender. And so uh, because of that, that was the reason that we put the ball in his hand uh, as a pick and roll player. Um, he got a lot of opportunities to handle in pick and roll, as did Devo, as did uh, L. Ellis. Um, and so we have three guys that can really play uh, with the ball in their hands in pick and rolls. Um, and then it puts a little bit of pressure on the defense, not knowing if the small forward, meaning T. Mark's going to handle it or the point guard's going to handle it. Um, because there's different coverages when different people are involved. So if you're one, two, and three, can all play in a pick and roll package, I think that it puts a little bit more uh, pressure, puts a little more um, dilemmas on different people. Um, and then obviously with, with Brazil setting and his ability to pick and pop, and then Chandler's proven that he can be a pick and pop player. And, um, and even Kai, like, you know, his shot was good. You know, it was a corner three and they had sagged off him. And, and um, you know, we feel like if Kai's open that, that, that we want him to be able to uh, to try to keep the defense honest as well. Uh, just real quick, uh, everything good with with Devo? I mean, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I think he's, I think he'll be he'll be fine. Yeah. Plus, you've talked a lot about wanting to get in transition and run this year. Purdue often dictated tempo, especially the first half. But you guys had your moments. What were the good? What was the good you saw in your transition game, and what were some things that they did well, and maybe that y'all just didn't capitalize on? It? Well, they do a great job of sending two guys back, Smith and and Lawyer are kind of non-offensive rebounders, so those guys uh, tend to get back defensively. And then and then Smith, I think, is a really really good on-ball pressure guy, so he'll get back and then come back and try to slow the ball down. Um, but there's, I mean, I don't have the stats in front of me. But there's probably not a lot of people that are going to score 81 points against Purdue. Just plain and simple. Um, ha happy with the pace we played in overtime. Um, you know, we talked about our conditioning and that this is why we work so hard in the summer um, to, you know, to be able to, to, to exert a lot of energy um, in an overtime game. And I thought that we did that um, probably the first half, Kevin, it's probably the half that, you know, we want our primary ball handlers to, to not walk the ball up. Um, 
So we can get better at that for sure. One quick follow-up. I handed the mic away. But on Mark's three, I don't know if you were asked this and I just missed it. What was the game plan there for him to read it and do what felt right um, to get it to overtime? Or were you all looking with much clock, that much clock left to maybe get to the basket and try to play a longer game and stretch the game out? Yeah, I mean, I think if we would have um, simply just been trying to get to the cup and draw an FTA, which is a lot of times uh, my nature, um, but for whatever reason, we, re we, we ran on the weak side to come off for a three. So I think when we talked about that, um, you know, I think, you know, T. Mark thought like, all right, coach is fine with us taking a three because the, the first option was a weak side three ball. Um, you know, much like a couple of years ago when we, you know, when Mason took a three against um, Georgia Tech. I mean, sometimes you just feel like, you know, there was enough time for sure, though, Kevin, to, to try to get a quick two, get a stop or foul, and then see what happens. So, um, but again, his ability to rise up is just, you know, it's unique. Question, Bob. Uh, how close was Graham to being available for you today? Not close. Um, you know, um, been, uh, you know, just uh, on the side and um, no timetable for a return. Um, you know, back spasms and uh, have no idea if he'll be ready for the first game or, or the fifth game. He's been pretty inactive, um, you know, so we'll just have to wait and see and, and uh, continue to have our trainers and, and, and doctors try to get the, get the back to be a little bit uh, looser, more freedom of movement in the back. Is Devo, is Devo a concussion protocol? No, not to my knowledge. I guess he was probably giving away about 150 pounds to Edie there when they were colliding. Just what you think, from your view of the bench, just what you think of that? Just two teams that, that wanted to win. I mean, you don't have that effort by, I think there was three guys in a pile. Um, and there's, they're like a really physical team, but a really, uh, a really cool team, meaning like there was nothing dirty the whole game. It was clean, hard-nosed basketball. And you can tell they got high, high-quality guys. Like those guys were all in a heap and, and you know, like the professionalism of, of the Purdue guys, like nobody was talking to each, you know, it was like, hey, let's, Coach Painter came over, he was checking on Devo, I was trying to help up Zach Ede. I mean, it was just, like, what a what an incredible performance by both teams for our crowd. Like, who gets to watch that in October? It just doesn't happen. Like, th that game was incredible for anybody that got to witness it. It really was. I mean, it was, it was almost as good as any game I participated in. It's an exhibition game. Zero thought of not letting him continue to have the ball in his hands. There was no thought of, hey, let's hide him in the corner. He's missed some free throws. It was like, I'm riding with him. I trust his mental toughness. It's no different than J.D. Note a couple years. He missed 10 shots. I'm riding. So, like, you have to, you have, to have your team believe that you believe in him, even, even during stretches of, of uh, struggles. And, obviously, he, was, he struggled from the line early. And, um, you know, we still put it even, I don't know, game was kind of in hand, and we still put it in his hands to, to get fouled. Final question, Jackson. Do you, the sold out tonight, the environment, everything, do you, since there might be just a little bit added juice from the Razorback faithful this year in the off season right now with all the high hopes that you guys have? 20,000 people before Halloween. That's, I don't know many places that can do that. I really don't. I mean, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, anticipation. And the good thing is anybody that was here got entertained. Woo pig suey.